In this video, we're going to look at the difference between click-through rates with a feature enabled and disabled. And what we're trying to prove here is um, that there's, um, we're hoping to prove that the click-through rate is higher um, when your ad can also be seen via Google's search partners. Um, and here's the setup. So let's say you and your marketing team are running an ad on Google Ads Search Network. You examine the click-through rate before and after enabling Google's Search Partners feature. Before enabling this feature, you had recorded 56 clicks on 2,946 impressions. After enabling it, you recorded 77 clicks on 3,054 impressions. One little note with this as well, we have to assume that these two kind of collections of data or samples, if you will, are independent. So the one didn't affect the other. There are no drastic changes between the two either. So there's similar scenarios where both of these are happening. The only difference is we've enabled this feature for the second sample. Okay, uh, and then again, they're, they're independent of each other, um, they're random samples, etc., etc. Okay, keeping going after that disclaimer. Question, is there sufficient evidence at the 5% level of significance that the click-through rate is higher when your ad can also be seen via Google's search partners? So what we're looking to do, we're looking to test for a difference in proportions between these two samples. This is a hypothesis test with that difference in samples. I'm gonna call sample one, the sample without that feature turned on. So that's the 56 successes out of the 2,946 impressions. Okay, dividing those two numbers will give the click-through rate or that's also just our sample proportion. Okay, at 1.9% for a click-through rate or 0 0.019 as the sample proportion. Now, now, after the feature is enabled, we see there are 77 clicks through for a total of 3,054 times that this ad is shown or 3,054 impressions. And that gives a click-through rate of 2.52%, or that is really our sample two proportion. Beautiful. Okay, now to do our test, the next thing we need to go do is get what's called our p-bar or our pooled proportion. I'm just gonna pause the video and bring up the formula for that calculation. Okay, so here is that formula. Now, why are we doing this? We need to, or what we don't have, forgive me, is a true population proportion. And what we are assuming that we're gonna go and hopefully contradict later, we're assuming the following to be true. We're assuming that there is no difference before and after this feature is turned on. That there is no difference between the true proportions for the two populations. If that were the case, if there truly were no difference between them, that's our null, that's what we assume to be true and then attempt to disprove it. If there were no difference, then we can just pool together our two samples that we have uh, and get a proportion overall. So overall, there are 56 plus 77 clicks through out of a total of 2946 plus 3054 impressions. And we do this pooling to get the best guess for our true population proportion. Um, and again, that's assuming there's no difference. So this is our best guess. And then we're gonna go compare to it later. 
Okay, that's a lot, I know. Um, but yeah, so there is the formula. There's also the Excel um, kind of commands here beside this. And again, look in the comments, there will be um, a file posted for this um, in the textbook here. Um, okay, now carrying on. Let's go get our test result, okay? Where we take the difference between our uh, population one proportion and our, and our population two sample proportion and divide by this expression here. Now, I like to kind of split this up in two pieces because this is quite the beast of a formula. So what I first do is go get this standard deviation in the denominator. So let's go do that now. So this guy is going to be equal to the square root of p bar, this guy, times one minus p bar. Okay, now times by, and forgive me, I'm just gonna pause the video for a sec and move this formula over so you can see it. Beautiful, there we go. Okay, times by, bracket one over the n1, which is this guy, plus one over n2, which is this guy. And then close that first bracket, this guy here, and then close the bracket for the square root, because we're taking the square root of the whole thing here. Beautiful. And that is our standard deviation. We can also just show it as a formula here. Wonderful, so there it is as well. And again, this, this file will be posted. Okay, and now we take this difference and divide by this value, which is the de denominator here. Beautiful, that guy there is what we just calculated that bottom piece. Awesome, so now we just take P1 minus p2, put brackets around that. We want this whole thing on the top and then divide that by this piece, which we just calculated is that 0 0.0038. Beautiful. And that gives us negative uh, 1.6318. Beautiful. And I'll just show that formula as well. Here it is here. Wonderful. Okay. Now, keeping going, um, next calculation is to get our p-value related to that. Before we do that, we have to figure out what type of test we're doing as well though. One-tailed, two-tailed, right-tailed, left-tailed. So let's start thinking about that. And that takes a little bit of extra thought when we're doing these differences. Okay, so let's think about what we want to prove. And then we're going to think about how we defined our samples, if that makes sense. So here's what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that the rate is higher with the feature turned on than without. So we think the rate, the click-through rate for sample two is higher than sample one. That's what we're looking to prove at the 5% level of significance. So we're trying to prove essentially that P2 is higher than P1. Okay, and let me just clean one thing up here. Beautiful. Okay, sorry, I did something that is a common mistake, so I'm going to actually leave it in the video just to clarify it because it's so easy to do. I used the wrong symbol in my null hypothesis. I don't want to prove that my sample proportions are different. I want to prove that my true proportions are different. So if you notice, I just changed this to a P and a P. That means true proportion. These are my sample results. I don't need to prove anything with those. I have those results. Those are true. Those are the two samples I collected. What I'm hoping to do is use them to infer something about the true proportions for each of these populations. And I think that they're different. 
I think that turning on this feature is going to increase the click-through rate, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, so I am hoping to prove that after the rate is higher than before turning on that feature. Okay, so I just changed the ordering of things here because in um, my formulas, I have P1 coming first. So what I'm looking to do, well, I, I'm looking to prove that P2 is greater than P1. If I look at this kind of right to left now, that means that P1 is less than P2. So I'm just rewriting this expression this way. They mean the exact same thing. P2 being greater than P1 is the same as saying P1 is less than P2. Okay, keeping going. Then that gives us that if we take P1 minus P2, it should be less than zero if I move this P2 to this side. Awesome, so what does that mean for us? That means that we are performing a left-tailed test. Beautiful. And that, oh, sorry, I've got to pull this out too. There, I have it here too. I'm gonna to get rid of that bar on each of them. Again, that's a very common mistake to use the wrong symbol. So I'm leaving it in the video on purpose here. We want P and P, P1 and P2, without the bars on them for the null and alternative hypotheses. Beautiful. Okay, now we want a left-tailed test. So then that determines the p-value formula as well. So for left-tailed tests, I'm just going to make room for it here. We use a norm.dist and just a norm.dist. So, or sorry, just a norm.s.dist. I put in that z-score, cumulative as true or one. So if I just want the area to the left of my z-test, then I just use norm.s.dist without a one minus, without timesing it by two, if we just want the lower left area. Beautiful. Um, and so that gives us a p-value of 5.14%. Oh man, so that's really close to our cutoff at 5%. So what does that mean? Do we accept or reject h naught? Well, we end up failing to reject H naught because that p-value is ever so slightly higher than the 5%. It sure is close, but we cannot definitively say yes, that we can reject H naught because our p-value is just slightly over. Now, let's finish off with a conclusion. And I'm just going to pause the video and just pop that in here and explain it after. Okay, so here is our conclusion. Because we failed to reject H0, we conclude that there is not sufficient evidence to conclude the click-through rate is higher when the feature is turned on. Very close here. This is really borderline. Um, you might want to just increase your sample sizes if at all possible. Look at this again a little bit. But yeah, as it stands with this 5% level of significance, we cannot say that um, the click-through rate is higher in the population where this feature is turned on at the 5% level of significance. Okay, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.